Welcome back, boys and girls, to your artsy studio, Under the Sea. Aloha. Glad you guys are back. Let's remember our three W's. How do we create? We take care of each other. We take care of our stuff, and we think like artists. All right, my artists, if you would like a mindful minute, go ahead and pause this video and play our artsy mindful minute that I posted in your Teams on Microsoft. Once you're done with that, you may join us back. Today we are in our activity week three. Let me, I'm really excited about the idea we have today. It's all about a type of art called uh, holography. And so let's go ahead and start by meeting our guest artist. So our first we is that we can meet guest artist Glenn Alps. Everybody say, hi, Mr. Glenn Alps. Hi, ah, Mr. Glenn Alps. Here he is. He was born in 1914 in the state of Colorado in the country of the United States of America. America. Uh, and he lived until the year 1996. So let's go ahead and take a moment to add up that math. So let me grab a marker. So if he was born in 1914, let's go ahead and maybe count by tens first until we get to 1994. Uh, so here we go, 1914 by tens, 1914, 1924, 1934, 1944, 1964, 1974, 1984, 1984, and we're trying to get to 96, so then we have to do two more, so 94, 95, 96. All right, let's add up those 10s. We have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 81, and 82. So he lived to be 82 years old. Glenn Alps. He was a printmaker, printmaker and an educator, so a teacher. He developed the type of art called cal uh, calligraphy, which is the art of making a calligraph. I'm really excited again to uh, share this with you. If you take it to the Greek, the first part of that, call or kala, means glue, and graph means drawing. So it's printing by drawing and gluing what you draw. Uh, all right, let's look at our... We can, number two, we can create holographs with the power of shapes and texture. So we're going to first cut shapes. I'm going to show you a seascape. You're welcome to make any idea you like or follow along with mine. That's fine. It's up to you. I have a few different examples of um, content and different ideas other than the seascape at the end I'll show you that I played around with. But we're going to use the power of shape. Cutting and gluing, so what do we call that? A collage. But we are going to use cardboard from like a cereal box. So that's what gives it the second part, the power of texture. So here's my example of the seascape. I'm going to show you how to create today a collagraph. And as we cut and glue, you actually, if you closed your eyes, you could see the picture with your fingers because it's popping out, because it's made, it's cut and glued from a cardboard from a like a cereal box or a snack box so that gives it the texture feel let's go ahead and work on that goal number two let me uh, pull you down oh and then texture rubbing if you ever use our drawing studio in the art room you are used to one drawer the top drawer has all the texture rubs well this is going to be similar when we're done making our calligraph we'll take a paper put it on top Use a crayon that you take the wrapper off and do the texture rub, rub and take a look. Pretty awesome, right? All right, let me zoom us down to our table space. And let me go over some of the supplies you will need today. I think I can scoot it back a little. There we go. Thank you for your patience. All right, let's get that focused. All right, so here we go. And I had some papers fall on the ground, so let me collect them real quickly. All right, I'm ready to roll. All right, so let's start with our supplies to make our call graph today. So you are going to first uh, look in your home for an empty cereal box. So you can see I cut this from some sparkling waters. You can use, it can be large boxes, small, so cereal boxes, most of you probably have. It can be smaller thing, like here's a, just a cream cheese box I have, so they'll be a little smaller. So gather your boxes, and then you're going to go ahead and open them up. 
And this, this thickness of cardboard is a lot easier to cut than a cardboard box that you would have to send in the mail. That's really thick and it destroys scissors. So that's why we're going to use this level. All right, once you have your main surface, you can flip it over and then we're going to start just cutting shapes. So again, this is for the seascape and then I'll show you different examples at the end. I've already had some here that I've started cutting out. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. So I'm thinking about doing fish, maybe some seaweed. So let me think of the shapes of fish. Here was just a Ziploc baggy box. So you can see we can use lots of the pieces. So let's see, for a fish body will be ovals and circles. And you can kind of just pile up. So here's some my body pile for my fish body bodies. And then tails most likely will be triangular shapes. So I'm going to cut some triangles out. And that way I'll have some shapes to play with when I'm ready. Almost like a puzzle to piece it together. Uh, we can even layer on, so maybe some fins that will go on the fish bodies. So those will be like smaller triangles. So but if you want a fish that's a crazy shape, go ahead and make it that shape. It could be a free form shape up to you. Maybe I want some seaweed, some flowing seaweed that looks like it has movement because it's not just straight, but it's wiggly, squiggly. So here's maybe some seaweed. Maybe you want straight seaweed. Maybe you don't want seaweed at all. You decide. So I'm going to make some lines, some wiggly lines for some seaweed. All right. Let's see. That piece is still good to use. And make some more seaweed. Some squiggly lines, flowing lines. When lines are squiggly or wiggly, it shows the illusion of movement. And look at that. Is that two? Oh, I'm not sure. I'll just snip the bottom of that off. Snip. There we go. And I have a trash pile over here I can clean up. All right. So once you have all the pieces you want, make sure my scissors are closed for safety. I'm not using them. And remember, we only cut our paper. Now we're going to start playing around with our shapes. We're not going to glue anything down yet until we have everything exactly where we want it. So there's one fish. Hello. Oh, you know what? It would be neat, I think, to make a little fish eyeball. So you can layer some of the pieces on top of each other. So I'm going to make a little tennis circle for an eyeball. I'm not, I'm not going to have all my fish have all the details. It's up to you. You make your fish how you want it. But when we do our texture rub, that will show in our texture rub print with our crayons today. Maybe give this fish a fin. Get some seagrass in. Let's do some more fish. This fish needs, maybe this fish will be swimming this way. Maybe it's a fish. This other fish was wanting a friend. So this fish came alone. It would be his friend. Yeah, small fish, you can have big fish. Up to you. So as you're maybe we'll move the seaweed, you know, then again, this is why we're playing with it first. You get everything exactly where you want it. You can make the fish swim around some until you have everything where you want them. All right, I'm going to let you continue to play with your pieces until you have your set on your holograph exactly how you want it. Once you are have all the pieces where you want them, you'll go back and you'll glue them on. So, remember, our liquid glue is strong if that's what you're using. So, just a thin line or dots. I like to smooth it out with my finger because I think it sticks better. And then hold it for maybe about three seconds, five seconds, four, five. And I take the tail. Oh, it's so small. Just a little a, a one dot will do on that. Rub it in. And you can kind of see, you can see that I have a placemat. So, if my finger is getting sticky, sticky, look what I can do. I can just take on my placemat and I can rub the glue there and then it just rubs off. So I don't even need to use water yet. So get that seaweed. Glue on my seaweed. Get it where you want it. All right. So go ahead and glue all your pieces down. Once they're done, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. You can pause our video. But once all, you have all the pieces where you want them, that means the, the glue has, I can shake it, but they're not coming off because the glue, I has, I've told the pieces with glue to stay where I want them to stay. All right, now for the second part of our holograph, 
get our extra pieces out of the way. Our second part of our collagraph is actually doing the printing. Today we're just doing a texture rub and we're going to save our collagraphs for next week where we're actually going to do a printmaking technique with marker. Um, so I'll tell you more about that. But your crayons, they're not going to work very well for your texture rub if the paper's still on. So go ahead and peel the crayon paper off the crayons you want to use for your texture rub. If you have a blank paper, that's great. You can use a blank paper. If you don't have a drawing paper, you can use notebook paper works fine. Um, I have a grocery bag. You can use magazine. So I'll show you a few different ones and uh, types of paper and how they use, how they work. So I think I'm going to make this one this warm color. Now it's important as you do your texture up. You are not coloring. Your crayon is going to sleep. So make sure the wrapper is off it. You peeled it, and then make your crayon to sleep. You want it nice and flat laying down like it's in bed. You want to hold your paper because you don't want your paper moving around. That will give you more than one rub of each picture. So holding it down, you want to push firmly with your crayon. You can go side to side. You can go up to up and down. Ooh, and look what's happening. We're having a print with the crayon. Again, even when I move this side, make sure I'm holding my paper down. Otherwise, and if you make a mistake, it's okay. You might want to do a couple practice papers first. Side to side, rubbing my crayon right off my paper, pushing it down with enough pressure that our collaged pieces that we glued on are feeling the crayon. Take a look. Wow, pretty cool, right? So there's a texture rub of a seascape. I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to bring it back. But I want to show you a few different types of paper. So here's just a notebook paper I went ahead and pulled out. So if you don't have a white, just plain white paper, or maybe you have white paper, but you want to reuse some of the stuff you have at home or see some different techniques. So let's take a look. You know, I think I'm going to change it my hand. Let's do, I'm going to do black for the side. So the lines of the notebook paper give it a pattern in the background. I think I'm liking the looks of that too because it gives it a background. You can always trim your paper. So that's an example on the notebook paper. Take a look at this one. Here's just a grocery bag. I went ahead and cut a piece of the paper grocery bag out. I'm going to flip it upside down so it's a blank side so I don't have the grocery store name on it. I'm going to cover up my collagraph, the part I can feel, I can see with my fingers, that texture. All right, cover it all the way down. Uh, let's see. I go back to my warm color. Again, holding my paper so it's not wiggling around. I push. Oops, my crayon broke. It's okay. A piece of the crayon will work just as good. In fact, I think my fingers can hold it a little better. Up and down, side to side. Woo! Seems like magic, but it's just science. Because the pieces we cut are raised, they pick up, the, the crayon picks up their shapes. Take a look. And then you know what? I'm just going to trim this wobbly top off it from the grocery bag. Oh, I think that one might be my favorite one yet. One more example of a reused um, piece of paper I found. A shiny piece of a magazine inside a magazine that came to my house. So now the piece is a bit smaller. So and this one I already did. So I just I kind of lined up where I wanted to do it. So this one I didn't even do a texture rub of my hole. I just did it a part of it. I think this one I used black pushing down hard. I would want a darker um, color for this one, but pretty neat, right? And then it has the background of words and letters. All right. Let me show you some examples of other color graphs I made. Just to give you an idea of different things. Here's one. I did circles, a semicircle to make a happy face. And the happy face is saying, hi. This one, I did two colors texture rubs, and I did a pattern. So I put it underneath on the top and rubbed with my orange crayon that was peeled. 
And then I moved it down. I found my orange and then I moved it down a layer and changed colors to blue, did my texture rub, and so far. So I made a pattern from the high. So the smile face is saying, hi, 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 hi. This one was just a smaller one, just from the Ziploc baggie, from the baggies. All right. Ooh, this is another one, uh, another material I found in the kitchen cabinet. Uh, I can't wait to show you the paper I used for this one. This was, again, just from my Sparkling Waters. This was a very small one. I made a flower and just a small piece of paper of my texture rub. So there you can see the Colograph and the texture rub. And look at the texture rub. This is from coffee filters. I was just experimenting and I did several of these, but take a look. It's like a whole bouquet of flowers. I used my warm color crayon, texture rub. I just kept moving it around until the whole filter was full. I think it's really pretty. All right, let me show you a few other ideas. I think I have about four more. Two are really small. Here's a small one I did, again, just on a piece of ah, original. I like that message. Be original. Again, shapes, just rectangles and a circle, different size rectangles. And my texture rub, just this person saying hi. John, this one's for you. This was from some creamer. So a medium-sized box, about the size of my hand. And I did a football scene. I have the football goal. I have rectangles for the grass. The football is an oval-like shape, but pointy on the end. And I'm going to pull it taller because I did like the fish. Um, when we did the fins on the fish, I did the little lines for extra texture on top of that football, John. And then when I texture rubbed it, you can see the lines in the football. You can do multiple texture rubs of different colors. So for all my football players out there. And then I'm going to show you another technique here in a second on our fish tank. But then after you do the texture rub, if you want to emphasize your collagraph, the pieces that are sticking out, you can outline them with a marker. And then if you want to make that marker absorb into your paper, you just paint it with water. So I'll show that's the last thing I'll show you on our fish tank. But I have two, three. I have uh, no, just two more examples. Oh, there was a orange one of a football goal. This one, kindergarten, first, second, yeah, my older kids, but definitely my first, uh, kindergarten, first, second, I think you guys would really like this one. This is Simply Shapes. It was from, a, this one was from a Cheez-It box. It's Simply Shapes. We have squares, rectangles, circles, triangles, and this one has symmetry. So if I cut it in half, both sides would match. I'm not going to cut it in half, but I just made a castle. And then you put, again, your paper on top, peel that crayon, make sure you're holding it down, you do your texture rubbing, and voila! A castle simply from shapes, the power of shape in our collagraph. Here's one I did, and then I did, I emphasize it with marker when I was done. I kind of personally like it without the emphasis, but that's my preference. So you choose what you like. That's evaluating artwork. Last example I have that I created was the sun and the moon. And we are here we have, I did them together because the moon does not have its own light. It reflects the sun. And this one I rubbed with two different colors. I did our orange for the sun, and then a cooler color, I used blue for the moon. All right, all right, all right. All right, last thing I want to show you with our going back to our seascape is if you want the background to have a little more color, you don't have to. This is just like a bonus step. You can get a marker and just outline the things you want to pop out. Or even maybe I want to do some um, waves. So maybe I'll add some waves in here to show that there's water by just doing a bumpy U line. Anything I want to really pop out, I'm going to emphasize by tracing the outside of. I want my seagrass to pop out. I'm going to trace the outside of each blade. Look at it flowing because they're not exactly straight. They're moving. Once you have everything highlighted that you want emphasized, you're going to get just about a thumb worth of water in a cup or a bowl. And you can use a paintbrush. You can even use a sponge if you don't have a paintbrush. And then you're just going to 
paint over with the water, the marker, and it spreads out. And marker, uh, water-based markers are water soluble. That means soluble. They absorb, the molecules absorb the water and it breaks it apart, the pigment. So this is just a bonus step if you want to experiment with having some color come and popping through. Washing my brush. I have one that I finished doing that already. So voila. Voila. And just to show you the difference to compare and contrast, we have just the crayon rub, and then if you want to do the water soluble marker in the background, the difference between it. That's what I have for you this week. I hope you guys have fun. Next week, make sure you save your collagraphs. So do not throw your collagraph away. Save it, put it in a safe spot. Maybe if you set up an art studio, stick it in that bin or that area. Because next week, I'm going to teach you how to print with them. So I'll post the supplies you need for that for next week. But this week, I hope you enjoy having uh, creating your texture of collagraph. Our last step, our goal number three, is that we can discuss and evaluate our artwork. So when you're done, share it with somebody. You can say, Mama, Daddy, Granny, whoever you live with, brother or sister, I'd like to share with you about the seascape or whichever uh, content you used in yours. Tell them what you made, why you made it, maybe what inspired you. So that's discussing your artwork. You can ask them to tell you what they think. And then just do a self-evaluation. Do you think it's a masterpiece level? Have you ever created anything this amazing before? Is it good, but you could do better? Maybe there's something where you could do add another detail. You could go back and glue another shape uh, to add more if it's looking kind of empty. Uh, so you guys just why you like it or not and what you could do if you want to change it up. All right, boys and girls, I hope you have a great week uh, creating with our power of shape and texture, remembering our goals. One, we can meet guest artist two, Glenn Alps who created uh, the type of art called holography. And then our two, we can create your own holograph. So we each can create our own holograph with the power of shapes and texture. And then three, share your art with something. I hope you have a great week creating, and I'll see you next week.